What's up guys, Thurs Cousin here. In this video, we are going to set up a React Native application from scratch with Expo, and we're going to run it on iOS, Android, and on the web. Let's go. Cool, so let's get started. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go to docs.expo.dev. This is the official website of Expo and the official documentation. And you want to copy this quick start command here. You wanna copy this, go into your terminal, and then you wanna paste it. But before you press enter, what I would recommend that you do is you remove the name of the app here, which comes pre-built with the command, and instead you do dash dash and then template. This is going to allow you to input some template that you want for your project. So for example, we can have here a blank template which will just start with an empty canvas we can have a blank template with TypeScript which I would recommend or what we're gonna do in this video is a template with navigation already built in so we're going to select navigation and it's going to ask us for the name of our app which is gonna be expo demo example and then it's going to start building our application. And now it's done installing. And as you can see, it's telling us exactly what we can do. We can CD into our project. So we'll do that, copy this, press enter. And then we have the option to run our app either on Android, on iOS, or on the web. Now we're gonna get to all of these in this video, but first we're going to start with npm run iOS. So I'll just copy this command, paste it here. And now here's where the magic happens. With literally just one command, it's going to set up everything and run our app on an actual iOS simulator. See, like that's literally all that it took to have a fully functioning iOS application on a simulator. And not only that, because we used the template, right? Remember, we used the template and we told it to set up navigation for us. It set up the navigation. We have here two tabs at the bottom that we can navigate between. And we also have a modal here, which if you've ever built a native application for the phone, modals are something that is very, very common. So this is a really great foundation for you to then take this code and then start to build your application within it. You have everything that you need set up. You have all of the app and all the dependencies and everything related to the phone set up. And you also have navigation. You can now go and actually build your app. Now to check out the code, we're gonna go here to VS Code. We're going to open a folder, go to projects, and then we call this Expo Demo Example. We can just open this maybe zoom in a little bit so that you can see. And we have all of the code for our application. We have some components, we have all of these screens here, right? This is valuable. This would take you a lot of time to do yourself. We have some constants, right? We have some color set up, which means that we have a base to start building our styling, our entire theme for our application, which is great if this takes a ton of time to set up on your own. And then you have your traditional sort of files inside of this app folder, which is basically your routing solution. Expo uses a file-based routing, which means that if you've ever used something like Next.js, how you structure these files and these folders inside of this app folder is how you're gonna be able to actually have routing in your application. So all you need to do to add new routes is to add a new file here, and then you're good to go. Expo literally handles everything automatically for you. The animations, navigations, going back, making sure that everything is in sync, making sure that you have valid routes and everything so that you can focus on building what matters, your actual application. Cool, so let's now try to run this application on Android and disclaimer, usually Android is not gonna work right off the bat. You're gonna have some errors as you're gonna see in just a moment. So we can go here and take this command, npm run Android, come back here, copy it and paste it. And you're gonna see we're gonna have an error because because just of the nature of Android, it's really buggy and React Native was initially not planned to be on Android. So because of that, we're still having to deal with some errors and Android usually takes a little bit more effort to set up and get working. So here what it's saying is that my emulator, right? In iOS, we've used a simulator. You have an equivalent for Android and that's an emulator, my Pixel 6, saying that it quit before finished opening. Honestly, I saw nothing even try to open. So this error is kind of a little bit weird. And as I've said, you're gonna see a lot of these when dealing with Android. So in my case, what I have to do is I have to open Android Studio and then I have to actually run the emulator from Android Studio. I'm gonna wanna go here at the top right. There's this little icon that has like a phone and Android. This is your device manager and you have your devices there. And the only thing that you need to do is press play. And if you don't have a device, you can actually just create a device and set it up and everything. But since I have one, I'm just gonna press play. Now this is going to open up. It's gonna take a bit of time. I'm just gonna quit this app because this was like a previous app that I did in the past. And now, if I go back to my terminal and run the same command again, it should work because now our emulator is actually running. And it doesn't. We have a new error, ADB device offline. And that is because I'm not sure why, but this emulator has restarted. Maybe because I pressed the play here and it was already open. I'm not sure, but I think that's what the error happened. So if I now try it again with the 
emulator set up it should work theoretically and it does right we have this command which starts the metro bundler and then if i go back to my android studio we have the application running here on android and actually i can make this i believe into a window there we go now this is kind of moving around so we can not worry about this and we can have here and we have the same exact app running on android as we did on ios and the beauty of react native right is that you have one code base and it's essentially identical on both platforms so we have here two tabs it works exactly the same and we also have access to our model here like we did before with the only difference if you're key into details is that models on Android look a little bit differently because Android doesn't really have native support for models like iOS does. But nonetheless, you still have the same functionality. It's the same screen. It's just behaving slightly different because now we're on Android versus iOS before. And finally, let's now try to run this on the web. So we're going to stop the server. We're going to go NPM run web. And now we should get a new set of errors or not. It might work automatically. Let's see in a terminal what happens. It's building. So this might actually work right after bat, but sometimes for the web, you have to add and build your own dependencies. But I think that I've done that actually in the past, which is why it works. Yes, it does, right? So this is the beauty of Expo, right? Expo, you can run one code base. So you can run it on iOS, on Android. And if you look here, it behaves the same, right? We have tab one, we have tab two. And then here, if I go here at the top right, we have a modal, which behaves very similarly in the sense that we're seeing the same content as we had on the actual phones. Now, disclaimer, I actually haven't ever used Expo for the web, so I'm not really familiar as to how it works and what its limitations are. But just from what I'm seeing right now, this looks very, very promising. And if you're looking to build an application that's cross-platform with just one piece of code, this is really, really great. And on top of it, this is also React. So if you have experience working with React on the web, you can easily come back here, jump in, and have no trouble getting up to speed. Now, there's one more thing that I want to talk about before I end this video, and that is the Expo SDK. So one of the other reasons why you want to use Expo over Bear React Native is the Expo SDK. The reality of building native applications is you're going to have to use some native libraries to add some functionality in your application. For example, let's say that you want to access the user's context in the application. Expo Context, which is a native library from the Expo SDK that you have to install separately, provides you that functionality automatically, which means that you don't have to go and touch the native code. Because getting the context from a user's phone is actually not that simple. You have to first request permissions from the phone, then you have to call the native APIs to get the contacts, bring them over into JavaScript, and that's a whole process. But if you use Expo Context, everything is done for you automatically. And and you have access to all of these functions here that are already built for you so that you don't have to reinvent the logic. And from what I've heard, if you're a native app developer, either in Swift or Kotlin or Java for Android, this is oftentimes even better than doing it natively. It's just easy because it's already built for you. So why wouldn't you use it? Right? Like it's literally as simple as installing Expo Contacts and then importing this as Contacts. And then you get access to all of these functions. Get Contacts async, get Groups async, is available async, and so much more. You literally don't have to do anything. And if you look here at the list, there's a ton of these things. There's off sessions, there's audio, there's AV, there's battery, right? How many times do you want to access the user's battery on the device? You can do this super easily with Expo Battery. If you're thinking of building a React Native application, I would highly, highly recommend that you build it with Expo because of all of these reasons. You have a lot of the work for you so that, again, you can focus on what matters, which is actually building your own application. Cool. So there you go. Now you know how to run a React Native application with Expo from scratch in just a couple of steps. It really wasn't that difficult. It didn't take that much time. And I'm convinced that it's going to be as easy for you if you can just get through like the Android errors. And honestly, if you just want to avoid those, just don't run it on Android. Delay that as much as you can. Work on iOS because usually on iOS, there's going to be less and less errors. If you've enjoyed this video, you can click here to subscribe. I would really, really appreciate it. There's also a video here that you can watch. It's probably super awesome, right? Because it's made for me. So I would recommend that as well. If you still have enjoyed the Discord, honestly, what are you doing? If you're interested in React Native, in React, it's literally the best resource available out there. I would highly, highly recommend it. It's the first link in the description down below. And with that being said, my name has been Nerys Kosin. This is Kosin Solutions. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Ciao, ciao.